the topic of the talk is something that uh, everyone could relate to. It's uh, how you detect uh, deprecated API while uh, preparing for Kubernetes upgrade readiness. And uh, it's uh, a joint um, research project done by Red Hat and the k -Side. So it's a non-remunerated partnership. And uh, it's been about two years that we worked together. We've done uh, several projects so far. So this is just uh, one of them that I'm presenting today. So unfortunately, my co-presenter, uh, Nico Mola from uh, K-Site, he's an R&D engineer. He could not um, make it here. So I'll leave uh, his contacts at the last slide if you'll have some K-Site uh, specific questions. My name is uh, Tatiana Kristop, and I'm from uh, Red Hat, senior software engineer from Telco department. I'm from Telco CI partners team. Typically, what we would do, we would uh, uh, ensure the hardware and software compatibility with uh, the latest versions of OpenShift. So we also own uh, a DCI tool that is um, distributed CI written and Ansible just to deploy on a daily basis the OpenShift and the workloads on the top. Uh, so let's go to the agenda. So we'll uh, discuss uh, Kubernetes upgrade readiness um, and how it's important basically to detect all the deprecated uh, API in advance to not face uh, any problems after the migration. So it's typically some problem that you will have uh, anyway if you are running something at scale, if you are running something uh, a relatively simple application, if you have uh, some sort of planned uh, development cycle, you have to plan in advance what should be updated in your uh, in your application to avoid uh, the problems. Then I will run uh, all the demos on event test operator, which is a demo operator just um, sending some specific events using a specific Kubernetes API. I will show you later. So that's uh, just uh, for you to have uh, an example of uh, how exactly the problem could arise. And all this is open source and will be shared. And uh, as the last part of the talk, I will be sharing the uh, case site experience with all this. We'll be overviewing the existing solutions. We'll be uh, basically checking what is the gap. We'll discuss our approach and we'll uh, showcase how exactly it was done uh, for case site. So let's start from a brief uh, discussion of the uh, Kubernetes uh, deprecation scheme. So you have uh, three types of the APIs. You have uh, alpha versions that are usually unstable. They may disappear in the next release and uh, or lose uh, backward compatibility. You have uh, beta versions that are a bit more stable than alpha. So usually the backward co compatibility is assumed. Uh, so it could uh, survive several releases, typically about three releases. And then you go to generally available versions that are supposed to be stable and uh, remain um, long lasting. So what uh, was uh, the motivation for us? So um, the upgrade that we were planning to do was to open shift uh, 4.12, so Kubernetes 1.25. And what is bad about this um, Kubernetes version is that it has a major uh, API deprecation. It actually, uh, since uh, Kubernetes matures more and more, mostly stable uh, APIs are going away, so transitioning into stable versions, and also you'll get um, uh, more and more APIs uh, coming and in, in the testing stage. So the more mature Kubernetes project becomes, the more frequent you have this situation. So for us, uh, it had uh, a lot of implications. Uh, we needed to pay an increased attention to the deprecated APIs, especially seeing how huge uh, K-Site software was. I will uh, showcase its uh, dozens of <laughs> operators. So we absolutely needed to detect uh, problems in advance. And uh, you see here you have uh, a potential for the workload to survive multiple migrations and then suddenly break on 1.25. So that's what we wanted to avoid. Uh, let's do a little um, discussion now of how exactly APIs could be used uh, out of the application, because there are actually two ways of uh, the invocation. 
So you have a uh, typical the static invocation, so that's what is shown on the left part of uh, the presentation. It's then you have a um, deprecated API used directly out of manifest. So it's a static invocation at the moment of the deployment. You can see that situation, and usually all tools, I will discuss uh, existing solutions in a moment, but just pay attention here, usually all tools, they will mostly concentrate on this first case, and they will completely ignore the second case. The second case is a dynamic uh, API invocation. So what that means, it uh, means that um, you are not using the deprecated API out of manifest, so it's uh, the, um, the second uh, situation. So it's like um, it could happen if you use um, uh, Kubernetes, for example, mm -hmm. here is a Kubernetes uh, Python library, you can have the same situation in Golang. If in your application somehow you invoke uh, Kubernetes API through the uh, Kubernetes library, in this case, uh, what is happening, your deprecated API is not appearing in the manifest directly and uh, it will be just involved at runtime when the application is running. So it will create you some sort of a gray area because usually, you know, like during the migration, you are not checking what's inside the application, but you absolutely have to check this uh, sort of hidden runtime API to be truly prepared for the upgrade readiness. Um, so just to stress again that this situation is uh, extremely often and uh, extremely um, use uh, extremely typical for the um, application. I just want to uh, show you some examples, uh, some situations where it can arise. And uh, you see that, for example, like custom resource controllers, uh, automation and scripting, then you basically have some script uh, running outside of your application. And uh, for example, I don't know, for CD, CI CD pipelines, uh, scaling the development, that sort of things. Um, you also would use that for healing and uh, auto-scaling, like, for example, if you want dynamically just uh, the replicas to cope with the um, increased or decreased loads, if you want to uh, just dynamically change the number of replicas uh, using the uh, Kubernetes API out of libraries, so even driven processing, so basically all e-commerce is here, so this is an uh, extremely frequent use case, uh, like monitoring and logging uh, to attach to uh, particular pods. And uh, the last one that I wanted to highlight, uh, uh, it's not that frequent for the moment, but it starts to be more and more used, uh, dynamic configuration management, and you use uh, some sort of um, models, uh, sometimes it's even AI models, uh, to dynamically adjust uh, the configuration to reach uh, the optimal traffic or the optimal uh, application parameters. So that's what you will uh, also see a lot in the coming years. So just uh, to sum up all this, uh, the goal is to show you that it's extremely frequent use case and you can't absolutely neglect that. We also had this uh, very situation at um, K site and uh, we wanted to basically detect the problems in advance. Uh, so what I want also to stress here, continuing discussing about the deprecated APIs, about uh, dynamically invoked APIs, that it's extremely difficult to debug. So, you know, like uh, there is a, some standard sort of approach, okay, I'll just migrate and I'll deal with that later if something will arise. So here is what will happen. The deployment will go just fine. It's runtime invocation. It will only manifest at runtime, and they will show you just in a moment during the demo that the error that will um, happen is uh, extremely unclear. So you will have really a lot of pain to debug. And if you go with the complex software, with uh, many operators, many teams responsible for, you will get really a nightmare to make it all work back. Um, so let's go to the demo just uh, to showcase exactly what is happening. So I will be using my uh, event test operator, which is uh, a simple demo operator where I will be using a, an API go which is going to be deprecated in uh, 4.12. Okay, so uh, let's run the demo. So you see um, uh, here I'm running everything on 4.13. So inside my operator, there is uh, an API that is already deprecated in 4.12. So let's see what will happen. It's a sort of simulation of upgrade and then see what happens uh, situation. 
So here I am just uh, going to deploy the application. So just running CRD, CR, um, running the service account and uh, basically checking that everything's fine. So I'm just going to show you that the deployment went fine. You know, we are using deprecated API, but the deployment is fine. You have CRD running, you have CR running, you have pod up and running, everything's fine so far. So normally what you would say, oh, the migration went well, so we moved uh, to the target version of the OpenShift, but let's see what will happen at runtime. Let's see what will um, actually happen Then you check the logs and you will see the denial of the service. So we are trying to send here the uh, events using deprecated API and we have very clear exception, reason not found, okay? So the server could not find uh, the requested resource. So good luck to debug that when you have uh, dozens of operators and uh, multiple teams uh, working on that. So let me just again go through the uh, root cause. So we are running it on 4.13 and inside my operator, I have a Python script, which is uh, actually using the beta API, which is deprecated in 4.12. As I've shown you before, the situation is really frequent, so that's what you will deal all the time. Uh, so let's move um, uh, to the problem. So while we were preparing for the Kubernetes upgrade, we absolutely wanted to detect all the deprecated APIs in advance because we were working with the large company running complex uh, software and we wanted to be aware of all the problems in advance and we absolutely wanted to deal with both types of invocation, both static and dynamic, since um, actually uh, KSite is using both uh, situations and this is extremely frequent. For real life ap application, you most probably will have some dynamic thing as well. Uh, so let's now go to and check the existing solutions. So we, uh, before doing anything, we just checked uh, what uh, market is uh, out here proposing for us and what we can uh, do actually to uh, detect um, the problematic situations. Uh, so we basically have all this list. So what I want to highlight right in the beginning before discussing every solution in particular, the most of them are really concentrated on statically invoked APIs. So what they do, they simply parse the manifests, they detect the deprecated APIs, they show the, you the list, and that's it. No, absolutely no attention to dynamically invoked API, and we did not find an existing solution, which is really weird because the problem is so common Everyone is dealing with the Kubernetes upgrade and uh, you really should be aware of such a situation. But it's sort of like a gray area. Um, who is responsible for what's, uh, for what's going wrong at run time after the upgrade? So here you have uh, even like large projects as a cube no trouble, only statistically uh, invoked, uh, statically invoked API. You have um, a Kubernetes deprecated API, so that's uh, a Wayfair Combinator project. Uh, you have uh, it as a part of Linter solution for the um, uh, for the another company. It's uh, basically checking for the deprecated API as a part of the Linter solution. And you have the solution by Fairwinds. It only works with the Helm charts, but again, it's the same situation. You only check the manifests. You do not go and check the application. You do not detect dynamically invoked API. So that's sort of um, jeopardizing your upgrade readiness. You are not sure what will happen at runtime. And most probably, you could get uh, some sort of problem. So you start to play quite a dangerous game here. Uh, so um, what we finally end up, we found uh, this um, solution with the IPA request count, okay? So that's not uh, developed for, in the beginning, uh, it was not developed for a deprecated uh, API detection. This is basically the solution for the observability and metrics. It's, uh, I think, that is offering you the um, detailed metrics on API usage. So it basically checks all API requests made to Kubernetes API server. Okay, and it provides you some statistics. And that's what was interesting for us here. Because this way, by checking IP requests directly made to the server, what you can do, you can really 
detect all the invocation of the APIs. You can detect both statically APIs called, you can detect uh, dynamically APIs called, and um, you can really get both situations detected through the source, you know. You can uh, really get your application up and running, check what exactly application, which calls application is doing, and use this uh, to basically check these APIs for the deprecation. So that was uh, uh, our idea to adapt uh, uh, to use this uh, IP request count object for our purpose. Um, so here is uh, what um, some some words about IP request count uh, implementation. So what we used is we used the status removed in release uh, field computation. So how it's done, uh, I'm leaving you the link to the implementation, but basically what is done is that it identifies unstable APIs, so alpha and beta that we discussed before. It uh, uh, uses uh, the deprecation timeline to detect in which version it will be deprecated and then updates um, uh, the field uh, status removed in release. So you will get basically get the field in which uh, for every API there will be, uh, it will be not empty if it's supposed to be removed uh, soon. So some uh, technical details to be aware before the usage. Uh, it's um, basically this object is native for OpenShift, but not to Kubernetes. Okay, so if you're running any OpenShift distribution, even like code-ready containers, you can use it out of box. If you're running Kubernetes distribution, different than OpenShift, then you have to pre-install uh, CRD and CR in advance. So you can definitely use the same solution, but you just have to pre-install it in advance. So that's uh, one of the things to be aware if you are going to test uh, the situation. And then uh, the second thing, uh, it works uh, starting from uh, OpenShift 4.9, so Kubernetes 122. So if you are going to migrate to the version that is less than 4.9, hopefully it's not the case for you, it will not uh, going to work. Just these two technical limitations to be aware in advance. Uh, that's why I'm highlighting them. Uh, so what we did, uh, we created uh, an Ansible role. Okay, it's again, it's uh, open source, it's available, you can check the code, and uh, here is the link. So we have our Red Hat OCP uh, Galaxy collection, so, and we, have used, uh, we developed basically the deprecated API role inside that collection. So what it does, it connects uh, to running uh, cluster, it uh, parses um, uh, IP request count object filters by removed in release field and uh, then it checks again the current uh, Kubernetes version, the next version and all the versions that were detected. So what you will get as an output, you will get a list of um, the workload APIs to be removed in each version and uh, you will also generate uh, a GUnit file which will contain test results workload compatibility with this version, with that version, with that version. So let's just uh, check again. So here is uh, some uh, illustration of how it's invoked. So here I'm basically demonstrating a standalone usage of this role. So it could be used uh, as a part of our DCI tool or it can be used as standalone, just uh, running a playbook. So the invocation is extremely, extremely simple. You just uh, in use include role and you define the path that you want this GUnit file to be generated. Basically, GUnit file is for nice uh, uh, showcase uh, in um, some uh, UIs or if you need to send it uh, in a more uh, presentable way. You also have uh, the output of uh, the Ansible playbook that uh, will basically provide you the exactly same map, the uh, basically mapping of the version towards compatible or the list of APIs that were removed. And uh, on the very bottom you see the GUnit file, so basically the same uh, presentation as it's in the middle. It's, um, you see that here it's uh, showing failure while checking uh, compatibility with 4.12 and you see the list of APIs to be removed. Uh, so now let's um, uh, run the second demo, so I'm just uh, showcasing you how exactly that could be used again on my demo operator. And this is all open source, you can find it uh, in GitHub, the link is on the last page. So here again I'm deploying my operator that is using deprecated API through the script. 
but this time I'm running everything on 4.11 that the API is not yet deprecated. So we have things up and running and we want to prepare for the, uh, for the migration to the next version. So we basically want to detect it in advance. So let's go with the deployment as before. This time everything will go fine. So we will not uh, just get the whole deployment up and running, but we'll also get uh, the functionality working. So as before, you have uh, CRD, CR, pod up and running. And uh, here is uh, the functionality of this uh, test uh, demo operator. It's basically sending custom events. So you see uh, the events of the type breaking news uh, that are sent by this operator. So they are sent using this uh, API deprecated in uh, 4.12. And we are on 4.11. So now let's uh, see again um, uh, if we could be able to detect uh, the deprecated APIs in advance, if we could be able to run our playbook and just get the list of the APIs that could be removed soon. And in this case, it's dynamic invocation. So let's check it out if it will work. So I'm showcasing you the invocation. This is the API that we are supposed to detect. So you see, it's really simple. You just uh, use a Galaxy collection. You use deprecated role. Uh, you run a um, the Ansible playbook. So here it's a standalone invocation. Okay, so really simple. You just provide your inventory. Uh, the invocation is simple. It's checking against your cluster. So here we are running uh, the playbook. Okay, so for the performance purpose, it's split uh, into uh, a detection per namespace. Okay, because you can get a quite large uh, IP request count object if uh, your application is call intensive. So here is, for example, for default namespace, you have this map that I've shown you before. So compatibility with 4.11 is fine, with 4.12 is not. And it's even longer list with the, of the deprecated APIs for 4.13 because it also includes the list for 4.12. Uh, so here is uh, the API that we wanted to detect. Um, and um, here you have uh, basically the same um, thing for uh, another namespace. Uh, it will also generate UG unit files. I was speaking about that before. So um, you basically see it in the form of the test cases. And uh, here, the compatibility with 4.11 is just fine. Everything's good. And uh, the compatibility with um, uh, 4.12 is not good. It's compromised. And we see a list of the deprecated API. So here is the event API that we wanted to detect. So we were really able to detect this API in advance while running our thing on the still uh, working combination. So let's now move uh, to the test case of the case site. So I was showing you a demo or an, um, an operator that is basically a demo operator, not to disclose the case site software. But uh, here I just want to discuss uh, some uh, applications, how it was done while really migrating complex telco software. So it will be. It was done on uh, K-Site Open Run uh, Simulators uh, Cloud Edition tool. It's uh, uh, a 5G test and management tool. So it's basically a software that is um, generating uh, 5G traffic on for the core and for the edge. And uh, if you have some questions related to that, unfortunately, my co-presenter uh, did not make it here. But uh, you could always reach him to ask uh, more questions about uh, this functionality. Uh, and uh, here you have a list of teams who is working on this uh, software. So you have 18 operators and four teams. So imagine how complex that would be if you would just migrate and then try to find, OK, not found, but not found where. And you will involve four dev teams to work on that and check uh, where exactly uh, the problem is happening and uh, what uh, exactly uh, went wrong. So. Here, in the case of K-Site, I mentioned that we are using um, uh, CI, CD written in Ansible, so DCI distributed CI. So here you have uh, basically the same uh, GUnit output as I presented you before. It's just a bit in, in a nice way, in a nice uh, DCI UI. So you basically see the same uh, use cases that uh, are happening here, so that's um, Mostly the, this time it's uh, for key site situation. And also please pay attention that for 4.12, you have uh, the output that is shorter than for 4.13 because 
actually what is happening is that uh, for 4.13 we also carry over the APIs that are deprecated since 4.12 so you don't have to really go f and uh, sum up all these use cases on your own so everything is done for you already so if you want to check the compatibility with 4.13 here is your list you just check one test case you send it to dev team and then that's how it goes so that was the output in the case of uh, K-Side. In the case of this uh, extremely large um, uh, software, and uh, that's what they got as a result. So they got basically four APIs that were deprecated, uh, that were to be removed in uh, 4.12. So we spotted quite a lot of things. Um, and uh, basically, I think three teams were involved in uh, basically removing this API. So that was a project that was planned, I think, uh, two, three months in advance to just fit uh, uh, in the workload. So if uh, we would migrate without doing that prior, that would probably compromise and really delay the uh, deployment a lot. Uh, so uh, here is... Uh, the list and uh, let's jump uh, towards the conclusion. So we were discussing uh, how to be uh, ready for the Kubernetes upgrade. So how to detect both statically and dynamically invoked API. We were discussing current gaps that uh, the existing solution, unfortunately, they only focus on statically invoked API. They only parse uh, manifests and they completely ignore dynamically invoked API and that uh, is jeopardizing uh, upgrade readiness. So you run these tools, you have the output, but then you are not sure what exactly is happening. You are not really aware of uh, if uh, everything was detected or not. And uh, basically that could uh, really create the problem later. And as I've shown, the dynamically invoked API is something like um, standard situation for the current applications. You will most probably have them in, the, in your workload. And this is uh, basically a problem that everyone can relate to. So I was presenting our solution. So it's open source Ansible role in the collection. By the way, I'm really advising you to check uh, Red Hat uh, OCP collection as well. It's uh, really nice. You can um, get uh, a lot of uh, Ansible code for deploying OpenShift on bare metal to uh, do a lot of uh, custom situations and this is really interesting. We are welcoming all the contributors and this is actually a force driven by our team, but uh, there are a lot of teams that are involved. So you're very welcome to contribute. Check it out. The project is pretty young. It's a uh, friendly environment to contribute and uh, most probably if you are deploying something related to Kubernetes distribution, on the bare metal, on the virtual clusters, uh, any type of the solution, any type of um, uh, of the installation, so that you most probably will find the solution here. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I was highlighting again uh, the IP request counts. Okay, so this is uh, uh, something that is uh, available natively out of OpenShift. If you are running other distribution, please think to install it in advance. And I also provided you the version. So just uh, basically what I want to say here is I really encourage you to try. I think the problem is uh, extremely common. The solution that we propose is pretty simple. You just uh, do uh, Galaxy install and then you run uh, Ansible playbooks. Uh, that's, it's that simple and we would really appreciate feedback because we imagine that uh, the problem is extremely common. We were really surprised, do not have it covered so far and uh, we would like you to really test it. Um, so and then I showed you how it was done on real use case for the case site while migrating from 4.11 to uh, 4.12. So that's basically it. And uh, here are some links. So you have um, uh, the solution in the open source, so Red Hat CI, OCP, Galaxy collection, and uh, this uh, given role I was speaking about. I am providing you a link to IP request count implementation, just in case you'd like to check it out, how exactly removed in release field was uh, calculated. You have all the demos in the GitHub. So they are all with this uh, event test uh, operator using event API deprecated in 1.25. And uh, yeah, some links about uh, key site in uh, Red Hat catalog and uh, also on the website. But please uh, feel free to reach about key site related questions to my uh, co-presenter, Nico Mola, and uh, here you have all the contacts. 
thank you so much. Uh, so uh, please uh, feel free to go with the questions. So any questions, do not hesitate. So basically what I wanted to say here, I really encourage you to try it out. You will most probably face the same thing. I mean, it's extremely common to have this thing. So just try it out, you would appreciate the feedback, just uh, run it, it's, it's simple, it's open source, um, it's easy to use, it's uh, pretty uh, common, okay? Um, no questions so far? Okay, do not hesitate to ask me in private if you are shy right now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>